and welcome to the Blockchain and Us, where pioneers and thought leaders talk about their journey in blockchain technology, crypto assets, and the token economy. And I'm your host, Manuel Staggers. This episode is supported by 21 Lectures. 21 Lectures' mission is to bring more developers to the Bitcoin ecosystem with in-person courses. Lectured by world-renowned Bitcoin and Lightning developers, courses teach participants the fundamentals to work with blockchain technologies. To learn more, visit 21lectures.com. My guest today is Jan Kamenisch. Jan is Head of Research at Definity and Director of the Definity Zurich Research Lab, and he also serves on Sovereign's Technical Governance Board. Before joining Definity, Jan was a principal research staff member at IBM Research in Zurich, where he led the privacy and cryptography research team and was a member of the IBM Academy of Technology. Jan is a leading scientist in the area of privacy and cryptography. He has published over 120 widely cited papers, was granted over 140 patents worldwide, and has received a number of awards for his work. And now to the conversation with Jan Kamenisch. Hi Jan, and many thanks for taking time today. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure. Jan, you've been working as a researcher at IBM for almost 20 years, and now you switched to Definity, one of the few billion dollar uh, blockchain projects here in Switzerland. Why did you make this move? Well, I guess uh, I was surprised myself in, uh, to some extent. Um, yeah, I mean, 20 years is a, a long time, and at some point, uh, uh, when the opportunity came up, uh, I sort of jumped on it because uh, it's exciting. It's uh, a di quite different, and I thought, I thought okay, after twenty years uh, doing something new might be might be good, refreshing, uh, and also, of course, uh, since th there's a lot of crypto, and I like to do uh, or cryptography, I should say, I, I like to do uh, cryptographic protocols, and there's a lot of that in Definity. So it, it was a very, very nice opportunity and I, I enjoyed a lot here. Mm -hmm. What uh, exactly are you working on currently at Definity? So we, we're, uh, I mean, there's lots of uh, sort of use cases uh, for cryptographic protocols uh, at, at all layers here. And, and so uh, essentially we, we're looking at the, the whole system that uh, Definity is uh, going to build, look what the crypto problems there are, uh, analyze the protocols that uh, have already been implemented, make sure they all are, are secure, improve other protocols uh, or design new protocols and then improve those secure. Mm -hmm. And what are the current research questions you know, that, you, that you work on here? Well, actually, uh, right now, sort of, we, I mean, we, we put a lot of the research questions sort of on, on hold because we want, want to launch a platform and we want to make sure that that platform is, is really secure. I mean, uh, it, it's, uh, well, it has like financial value attached to, uh, to the, the whole platform. And so therefore, I mean, you need, you need to secure that. So security is, is important. Yeah, and so from that point of view, most of the questions are not so much traditional uh, cryptographic research question, but but really like uh, analyzing the the protocols, uh, making sure that uh, the security is all fine. Maybe coming up with some new security models because uh, uh, yeah, how, how can you analyze some of those protocols? And, um, it's a bit different from maybe what you would do traditionally, where you sort of have okay, here here is your uh, normal, uh, well-established uh, security models, and now, um, yeah, you need to t t take so, uh, some things a bit di uh, have a d different view on, on things. Maybe some here, here and there to uh, to be sure that uh, the things are okay. Mm -hmm. But that's that's quite different, probably, from what you've been doing at IBM. I mean, I guess there, it was probably more of a research focus on fundamental research. I mean, that's my impression that I get, but how, how is your work different here from what you've been used to at, at IBM? Well, in some, in some sense, of course, it, it, it's different because we, we're building up a company, we, we're interviewing people a lot, we're looking for, for, for the right people to, uh, to, to work with us, help us uh, launch the platform. 
So that of is of course different, just because of the scale. I mean, at IBM, I was also running research projects, hiring people, but just maybe like two people a year. If there was a new project here, it's it's more like ten people a year, or like even more. I mean, how big is your team? Um, well, <laughs> sort of growing constantly. Uh, I guess right, right now we're somewhere in with 12, 12 people. Um, but that, that's just a research side. Of, there, there will be more people here in, in the Zurich office. Uh, we're, we're growing up to well, maybe, maybe 50 people by the end of this year. But, but this will be engineers uh, working, building the platform together with researchers. And so maybe one, one thing that is really different here from... from uh, at IBM, we're sort of uh, the researchers and engineers are under one roof uh, here, um, and so there's much closer collaboration uh, on building that stuff. So uh, less of an ivory tower sort of setup. Well, uh, IBM wasn't that much of an ivory tower either. I mean, it still was a commercial entity, right? And so we, we did some. Well, uh, some of the research was fundamental, but other research, some of them was. Uh, a long-term research, but a lot of the research there is also uh, uh, geared towards product. Uh, so, at that point of view, uh, that, that, that focus is the same. And also, what, what I did at IBM, I was always uh, concerned about uh, practical protocol, something really that's also a real-world problem that, that can be used in, in products. But I think here, of course, it's much more direct, right? You, you know that if you solve a problem, uh, then it will be in, in the product immediately because you're working with the engineers uh, uh, to make that real. Or if an engineer has uh, uh, come up with some, some solution to solve something, then uh, then you look at that directly, analyze it, and, and maybe improve it, or maybe you say, okay, it's fine, actually, a great solution. It, it, it's much more direct, obviously. It's also a much, much smaller company, right? <laughs> I think that's an interesting point that you brought up there. You you spoke about the input, the direct feedback that exists between engineers and the researcher. And um, you already had that at IBM, here maybe more. But of course, if somebody's researching at a university, they don't have that at all. So how important do you think that feedback loop is for the quality of the research? Well, I guess it can go both ways, right? If, if you have to... Uh, if you're completely disconnected, maybe you, you, you might solve some problems that are completely irrelevant, uh, that don't have any applications that might, might be nice academically because you're satisfied because you solved something in the nicest possible way. Uh, on the other hand, if you're somewhere where you have a close relation, then of course you're, you're much more focused on just solving exactly that problem and maybe if there's some time pressure, maybe not in the nicest possible way. But I think at the end of the day, also, if you do more industrial research, um, you should always take enough time to, to solve it in, in the right way to make things whole. whole. I mean, uh, to, to really have like a, take a step back, uh, think about, okay, so what am, am I doing here? Does this make sense? Is that how it should be? And, and then... Uh, because only that will make sure that the, that what you build will really be secure. Because if, if you're too much uh, down into it, uh, you, you might miss a lot of things. And so uh, I think that that's st still the same. So I think at the end of the day, it, it's not a huge difference. I mean, universities have, have to do projects as well. They have to get some external funding increasingly uh, as well. So I don't think... Like if, if I would say like the difference between IBM and the university research, it's, it's probably this, uh, very, very close. I mean, uh, right. I mean, uh, if you're in a company, uh, you, you might be closer to getting stuff into products. But on the other hand, that university, you can do like spin-offs, startups. Uh, so probably at the end of the day, uh, as long as you're doing research and publishing papers, it's probably the same in both places. Mm -hmm. Let's say you work on a new research project here at Definity. What is the process that this project would take over the course of its life? Uh, I guess there's maybe maybe not a typical uh, way to go, go about it. I mean, there's, of course, a few things that 
uh, I mean, like a research methodology that, that you learn also like when doing PhD. That sort of the well, apart from having research results, is the most important thing that, that you maybe have to learn how to look at things and how, how to solve things. Uh, but then how uh, how you come up with the research question might of course differ quite a bit, right? You, you, you might. Uh, like uh, walk walk home or walk walk, walk to work and then the, and then start to think okay right actually there we we have an issue there's a problem here that we need to solve and so somehow you, the first step is always uh, i guess recognizing that there is a problem uh, something that you you want to address it could be something that is immediate because uh, an engineer tells you, "Look, I don't really know how to solve." It could be because they uh, they did something, uh, have a solution, and then you think about, "Well, that solution actually doesn't really solve the problem." Uh, so, I think that the first, uh, probably the most important thing, is really to to recognize the problem, to to see how does the problem look like, what is the problem really, what are we trying to solve, and. Uh, what is probably the most difficult is, uh, I mean, what, what kind of security features do you want to have? Because, um, right, you, I mean, you, you have to get, get in, in some sort of a paranoid mind as well, right? You have to think, okay, what, what could people do here? What, what could people, uh, what could go wrong? So you not only have to, you have to figure out what it should do, but you also have to figure out what, what shouldn't be possible, right? So, so that, that's, that's the most difficult part, probably. Um, and also, like what people probably underestimate very often, right? Because wow, that's the solution you think. But the whole process to really clearly uh, phrase the problem is a big part of, of the research thing. And then, obviously, you need to find a solution. You need to solve that. You need to find uh, a way, a cryptographic protocol or uh, another protocol, a, a mechanism uh, to, to solve your problem. And then you have to show that this problem actually uh, not only solves solves the problem from like a functional uh, functionality point of view, it does what it should do because that that you can just test. But you also need to to show that it is secure, so that all the other things that you thought uh, so it should not be possible can't happen. And, and that again is a whole new uh, challenge. And uh, and sometimes you need to go go back and, and realize, okay, I can't quite solve the problem that way. And so I have to rephrase the problem, so, so then uh, it's like a cycling back and forth. But I think that's sort of the, the typical approach uh, <laughs> that you always have to do. Yeah. And then you have other things that you, that you go back to, to an engineer and say, look, here, here's how I think we could solve that. Actually, it works out, it's secure. Uh, but then uh, you might have uh, overlooked some like realization issues. You realize, well, it's, actually, it's not practical at all. You couldn't implement that for this reason. So there, there's other issues as well that you need to cover. So it's, it's a very interesting, but also very satisfying uh, uh, job, right? I mean, it, it can you it can be very satisfied if you solve a hard problem that that you came up with. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of uh, recognition there, I guess, as well. Mm-hmm. Cool. What's a recent hard problem that you that you solved? One that's maybe particularly interesting. Well, I can uh, maybe, maybe tell you a bit from, from the time at IBM there, right? I mean, uh, I think that's uh, easier to talk a lot of things that we solved at Disfidity right now. I mean, uh, we're still build, building the system, so uh, we, we can't talk about all, all the things right now. We, we'll, we'll do eventually. I mean, of course, it, it is important that you always publish uh, your your your, uh, ver, your security, your crypto protocols, that other people can uh, do them as well. But I think still, still one of the uh, one of the things that I liked a lot is my work on identity and, and uh, privacy, preserving identity, uh, which uh, I guess I also hope to be useful to, to defeat it at some point. And but it sort of shows uh, sort of what, uh, what what, was what exactly like. what exactly was that? I mean that project. Uh, right. So, so so the idea there is that uh, if you uh, Use your identity online. You, you quite often reveal more information than necessary. So, so one of my uh, favorite two examples is, is uh, for, for those who were old enough to remember when, when you rented like a, a movie at a video rental store. Uh, right, I mean, you could like watch all the movies, then you would go with the empty, uh, uh, empty box to, to the uh, to the clerk, and the clerk would say, "Well, for this movie, you have to be over twelve. For this movie, you have to be over 18. 
And of course, you also have to be a member, right? And so you would have to show your membership card. You would have to show your identity card. You would verify those things. Uh, but of course, at the end of the day, he wouldn't remember any of that. Uh, well, maybe he would note down which movie you rented. So you have to get, give it back. But if you do the same online, uh, of course, if you do the same thing digitally, I mean, all this information gets stored on a server somewhere. Uh, and that server has to be like online 24-7 because they, they want to rent out movies, right? So it has to be highly available. And that's very hard to protect. So, so you leave, and if you send your, all your data there, you, you leave it there. And that makes you very vulnerable because uh, now potentially everybody who hacks that server or if they're not careful with backups, that information spreads. And, and digital information is very hard to, uh, uh, to keep uh, at a place because it's easily copied. And, and so on. And actually, people want to make backups so they don't lose it <laughs> because you can also easily lose it. And, and, and so what I was working on is and sort of a typical crypto problem in some sense. Well, how can I convince uh, online that the, the movie rental service that I have all these properties without actually revealing all the data? Because that's all, all, all they needed to know, right? Uh, do you have the sufficient attributes over 12 uh, subscription at the right kind? Uh, and they didn't know the, the exact values. Just need, they need to know that that's satisfied. And so what we did, uh, what I did there was like uh, my colleagues coming up with some, some crypto protocol that they could just uh, transmit that single bit of information. Yes, uh, I am allowed to uh, rent that movie without revealing all the all that other data. And it seems very par paradoxical. How, how could you do that? I mean, if if you if you want to learn whether somebody is older than twelve, you you need to see their birth date, right? But that, that's the cool thing that crypto allows you to do. It allows you to sort of uh, run a cryptographic protocol, such that at the end of the day, uh, you would be convinced that I'm older than twelve, but you, you wouldn't see my birth date or anything. You just would know that I got uh, an identity card from the government issue that has a birth date on it that is further in the past than twelve years. And so I, I can run a cryptographic proof protocol with you and that convinces you of that. And I guess uh, uh, definitively we're doing uh, similar things in, in some sense. It's cryptographic protocols, make sure that uh, uh, everything is was, was done okay with, with, without uh, re revealing uh, uh, too much information. So you, you need to protect uh, uh, things at the end of the day. Exactly. So I guess that's another buzzword today, apart from blockchain. I think everything is zero knowledge, and then people are, are happy about that. But indeed, so that, that's why I guess uh, this whole blockchain world, because we, we wouldn't even say definitely this is a blockchain. It, it's like a, uh, an internet computer, a distributed computer. So distribution is really a way to make things secure without... Um, um, without like, at the cheaper cost, right? I mean, you can make some a single server secure, you can try to lock it in, you can try to disconnect it from the network and all of this stuff. Uh, but that's that's very costly. So a much easier way is, is to distribute uh, that uh, computation such that uh, unless like a majority uh, um, of, of, the, of the, these computers are, are hacked, then the overall system is, is still good. Mm -hmm. And that is really what, what um, if you want to say, blockchain in some sense is, is all about. It's, it's about distribution of trust so, so that you can protect the system in a cheaper way at the end of the day. Now we're already talking about what Definity does. Um, what makes Definity special, you know, in comparison maybe to other blockchain projects around? So what I really like about Definity, uh, what uh, was one of the reasons that, that I joined was that uh, it, it's unique in terms of the vision, right? So there's a uh, vision. We, we, we're going to build uh, an internet computer. It's like uh, an online computer that's highly available, that's highly secure, much better than anything that exists so far. So I like this. There's a vision. That's what we want to achieve. There's other projects that they're much more limited in scope. Which, of course, on the one hand, it, it's much harder to, to build this, but uh, I mean, it's always good to be very ambitious because that, I think that's the best way to to achieve uh, nice, excellent uh, results. Mm -hmm. The internet computer, that's what Definity wants to be. Yes, so uh, we want to 
build a sort of a secure computer by, by this, essentially by a distributed, a distributed system that uh, runs uh, computation distributedly, um, and, and so therefore making it secure, right? So if if you have uh, uh, your own computer uh, at home, and then of course there's issues like it make break down, and you might lose all your data, right? And then you're cooked. So maybe already there you could say, okay, like I'll just do co- two computers. Always make sure that they, there's a backup. That's already a good idea. But still, it's still at your home. If, if there's a burger coming, and taking both computers, you're still cooked. Uh, and so when I mean, you quickly come up with, okay, maybe it's a better idea if, if I put that computer with, with like a friend of mine and stuff. So then you're getting towards the distributed system, right? And and that's also what is nice from the cryptography point of view. It's a distributed system, a distributed cryptographic protocol. And and that's really what, what the FIDIT is about, right? We want to build... A distributed computer that's very easy to, to use. You don't have to worry about uh, the computer crashing ever. It, it won't crash. You don't have to worry about backups because it won't lose data. You don't worry how to about to upgrade uh, it because it becomes too slow. It, it's it's all built in, right? So it's uh, you don't have to do any, any maintenance. It will be highly secure. It won't lose data ever. There, there will no uh, no attacks be be possible. So from that point of view, it's the best thing ever, right? Everybody wants to have that, and we're going to build it. Let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back. This episode is supported by 21 Lectures. 21 Lectures' mission is to bring more developers to the Bitcoin ecosystem with in-person courses. Lectured by world-renowned Bitcoin and Lightning developers, courses teach participants the fundamentals to work with blockchain technologies. 21 Lectures covers cryptography, the structure of transactions and blocks and how they are chained, smart contract language, the Lightning Protocol, as well as software and toolkits to develop on top of the blockchain and Lightning. To learn more, visit 21lectures.com. So from that point of view, it's the best thing ever, right? Everybody wants to have that, and we're going to build that. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure there's still several gaps, you know, between that vision and and actually building it and and that's probably what what you're working on yeah right? exactly so that, that's why i like it's just good to have a vision it, it's like uh okay l- l- let's go and land on the moon and uh, if there's a vision eventually you, you build it right and then so there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that you need to figure out you do you need to do it uh, right uh, you need to solve a lot of problems and so that's really uh, what is nice here right so we're, we're having this vision uh, we're building towards that of course step by step right we, we just uh, don't take a plane and try to fly to the moon but we think about it okay so good we need to have a, a rocket we need to have a moon lander all these kind of things right we think because okay, so that's our goal what, what, what do we need to build in order to go there and, and that's uh, what we're doing currently, right? So uh, designing the overall system, then building, uh, building it part by part. Do you? But do you publish? Do you plan to publish the research? So uh, the, the work we're do, doing now, right? We, we're sort of analyzing the, these protocols. We're building, specifying the protocols. Uh, we, we make security proofs, and a lot of that, that stuff are, are novel protocols that, that uh, obviously, uh, and we, we need to publish them because. Uh, I mean, a good way to do to do security, not only by by doing the. I mean, you need to do the proofs and the models correctly, all of that, but also other people should should be able to read that because at the end of the day, we're all humans. We we, we do make mistakes, uh, and so like it needs to be peer reviewed. Other people need to look at that, and maybe they have ideas to improve that. So that's the normal re- research project or process that. Uh, we're also heavily subscribing, so definitely we will publish uh, our results uh, once they're ready. And also that right now we're sort of focusing on, on, on building, uh, uh, launching our platform, and, and so uh, like smoothing out, uh, making all the papers, all the research we do readable, accessible. Mm-hmm. That's still uh, like quite a bit of, uh, of a step and, and shouldn't be underestimated that like, the, the time it takes to write something nicely to explain it nicely to make it understandable it's very important too and uh, uh, so we're going to do that but just uh, right now we're, we're focusing on uh, on the uh, more on the content rather than the presentation mm-hmm. okay cool so you know maybe maybe if we look beyond Definity at the whole 
um, blockchain space, at the whole crypto space, what do you think are important questions there that need answers? Well, I, think, I think blockchain was uh, I think blockchain now on purpose it was really great for cryptography, right? So it's uh, it's a lot of like it inspired a lot of uh, new work, a lot of new thinking, and um, I guess it, it started uh, by the whatever by the Bitcoin protocol that people said, okay, well, this uh, is a new approach how, how to uh, uh, to design a distributed system because normally you you would say, okay, here's like end parties and they run a protocol uh, together. But of course, then you always have to know who the M parties are. Whereas in Bitcoin, sort of that, that problem was defined away because whoever has a lot of computational power is one of the parties, and so that was 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 totally a new approach. And I think that that was really needed to ignite this uh, distributed uh, computing, uh, well, and uh, distributed systems as well as uh, cryptography. And so it gave a lot of new input and opened up tons of new research questions. Well, some of them are okay. So, uh, what are the exact security models here that, that we have to figure out how how to uh, how to go about proving things secure? What what are the assumptions? Uh, because some of the typical the traditional uh, models uh, don't quite fit, or, or they're too strong, uh, not allowing for, for for good protocols. So there, there's a lot of like new questions there. Uh, there's a lot of other problems like how uh, um, how do you build the system? Uh, a lot of like I mean you have to really dig down uh, uh, once okay in, in the in the workings of all of these uh, things in order to. Uh, uh, but uh, the closer you look, the, the, the more problems you also find, right? So it's, uh, <laughs> well, security is one, right? And currently, I think many people are looking quite closely at security. But what's another one that you know blockchains need? to become more, you know, useful and mainstream. Well, that, right. I guess there, there's maybe like, uh, what, what is the killer application? Uh, th that's one, but uh, I'm really more focused. That's a big <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. I mean, that shouldn't be the answer. I guess. That's, uh, well. And I think there will be tons of, tons of other applications if you think about, uh, well, uh, in some sense, any registry is already a, an application. It's uh, how we could... Uh, uh, you know, a property register that, that uh, right now are like very de uh, very uh, decentralized, but in, in another way, right? So it's it's like uh, every uh, community here runs their own th system. Maybe they have it on a computer, um, maybe not. And if it's on a computer, is, is it secure? So that's like one application they could just uh, run like a blockchain kind type protocol and just uh, have it more secure and, uh, and more available at the same time. So I think there, there's really a ton of problems that uh, a ton of applications that you could just uh, it's sort of a much better solution to, to uh, use a secure distributed system. But of course, also like how, how do you build these things? I mean, that, it's not uh, so easy either. I mean, uh, of course, uh, for some of the things, maybe a blockchain wouldn't be the right solution. For other things, it definitely is. But it uh, like many things, right? It, it's not like a big hammer that you can just uh, uh, hit everything. You need to be a lot of more careful design. What are, are the properties that you need? Also, but what should the platform provide? Right? I mean, it's. Uh, if you have something like, uh, maybe that's another view, how to look at something like a Definity platform, uh, like a computer by itself, it's well, it's helpful, but maybe it's not all that helpful. It's more like if you look at the, maybe Apple uh, App Store, it's uh, in some sense like the iPhone is also a computer, but it has this ecosystem around it, right? With, uh, you can uh, put apps there, it, it has billing and, and all this. And at the end of the day, that's something what, what you need, right? You need like a whole ecosystem for things to really lift off because with a better computer, if you just buy your computer and take it home, there's hardly anything you can do with it. And so you, you need to have like applications that are useful and, and only then you can really uh, build something. And I think that's like another, what is the right set of applications? How to build those applications? I think uh, we, we don't run out of, uh, of work anytime soon. So there's a lot of stuff to be done. Yeah, good point. There is obviously a big blockchain and crypto community or that's quite global. But is there also a research community, you know, where you exchange ideas maybe with other researchers from other projects? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, there's the uh, cryptography community. 
Ja, men, uh, one of which I was lucky to be part the last 25 years. I mean, there's uh, three conferences, three big conferences uh, every year, one in Santa Barbara in the US, or one some po- some place in Europe, it, it varies, one one in uh, Asia Pacific, also that, that, that varies. That, that's where people meet and there's more uh, specialized conferences, so, some are specialized around blockchain, then there's distributed system conferences. I mean, that's, I mean re- research lives on, on those conferences, right? I mean, they, they meet, exchange results. And, and of course, some of that uh, has been hijacked, if you want to say, by uh, the blockchain movement. Some people some people are already are a bit uh, worrying about that. It, it takes, uh, I mean... Uh, some researchers, uh, you mean? Right. I mean, because uh, you, you see people in T-shirts, uh, crypto means cryptography. <laughs> <laughs> that word has been hijacked uh, to, to mean like currencies rather than, than, than cryptography. But I think at the end, it's, it's very good. It's a lot of inspiration. It's lively. And if people had asked me, uh, should I do a, a PhD in crypto 10 years ago? I would still have said yes, but I would have warmed them. Look, it's, it's a tough field. Uh, uh, the, the sort of the big problems have been solved. Uh, well, maybe quantum computers is another thing that uh, that helped to ignite that as well. So it's uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, new crypto questions that uh, uh, around quantum computers and how to protect uh, against that threat if it ever exists. Uh, but I think the, this whole blockchain movement was definitely another big uh, game changer, and that the, the cryptography community uh, benefits uh, a lot from that as well. Mm-hmm. Cool, Jan. Did you always want to work in research? Um, I guess I don't know. <laughs> I grew up on a on a tiny little farm in the mountains, right? So. Uh, and I worked like all summers. We worked on uh, making hay and uh, all that kind of stuff. So it was, uh, but, but then yeah, yeah, I liked math and I liked doing that. So that was uh, a big satisfaction. I also like to do build other things. I mean, that's what, what you do on a farm as well, right? I mean, you, you fix your own things, uh, and there's always stuff around because uh, we always had some wood and nails and hammers and saws lying around so you could build stuff so I always li- liked building stuff but then uh, but at that time I, d- I did not have a clue what, what research was about I didn't even, even know that universities just, uh, would exist I mean, hmm. um, yeah but then I mean uh, then, then uh, I thought I w- would like to dig more into math and so uh, I went to uh, gymnasium uh, did that and then I went to because I went to study, well, I wanted to study math, but then I decided the electrical engineering would be uh, more interesting because uh, I had this uh, maybe stupid picture that math, you would end up as a teacher or like insurance mathematician, which uh, sounded really boring, so I didn't want to do that. Um, right, but maybe at the end of the day, math would have been uh, maybe the better choice for uh, as a cryptographer. Hmm. Anyway, but, uh, but then I sort of went in, into electrical engineering but then I realized that I'm really more interested in, in research, discovering new things than just, uh, uh, well, I shouldn't say just, I mean, it's like, uh, engineering is also a, <laughs> a nice job, but uh, I, I sort of figured it, it's more of, of the same. So you, you, you apply the skills that you know, but uh, you don't really learn uh, new things. At least that's what, what I thought at the time. So I, I thought, like, no, I really want to go into research to, to discover new stuff, to solve that and so yeah, that's I, ended, I ended up ha- doing research and uh, somehow, by coincidence, uh, more or less, I ended up doing crypto, but uh, I really love that. So it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's a great field. It's, uh, you can solve these sort of paradoxical problems, you solve things that you th- thought was not possible to start with, and then actually you, you solve that. So that that's uh, very satisfactory. Mm-hmm. Cool. As a researcher, what, in your view, are the most important skills? Uh, persistence. You, you, you should not give up. I think that that's uh, something. Yeah, you have to have some, uh, yeah, some stamina there. Um, but also, you, you need to be able to structure problems, to analyze uh, things, right? You need to, to be able to dissect things. Uh, sort of question yourself all the time. Is this the right way to think uh, about it? Um, I think it, it, it's, it's a hard job in a sense. You, you, you just can't go home and uh, switch your brain off. It, it always uh, 
uh, sort of uh, follows you, right? It's, it's uh, maybe more uh, more an attitude uh, than a job, right? So it's sort of like a, a way of living in some sense. You always think about okay, your problem is always somewhere in your mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, Right, I guess your family has to bear with you. Because <laughs> Can you <laughs> part of your mind is still uh, <laughs> thinking about uh, what work? Yeah. Can you can you learn that skill, or what do you think that's impossible to learn? I don't know. I mean, there's different approaches. I mean, uh, there's a certain curiosity. I think you you have to have, right? I mean, of course, there's a lot of things you can learn about how how to do that. Uh, I mean, what's the procedure? Uh, so some things you can learn, and, and uh, I guess with many things, you have to have a talent, and then you can learn things. And uh, if you have a, have a big talent, but you, you don't learn the right things, you're also not good. If you learn all the things, uh, but you don't have a talent, maybe it can maybe go quite far. And uh, maybe there's also d- different kinds of talents. and mm-hmm. Doing things right instead of doing the right things. Yeah, stuff. <laughs> oh, I guess I have to do both. <laughs> you want to be successful in research, you also have to do the right things because if you do something that nobody else is interested in, you will be frustrated as well because nobody cares about your results at the end of the day. So mm-hmm. th- there's a bit of that as well. I mean, uh, yeah, you, at the end of the day, some, somebody needs to pay your salary, and uh, if nobody's interested in, in what you're doing, uh, it's probably also very hard. Mm-hmm. Right, and and for that, it probably needs more than a curious mind to be a successful researcher, I guess. Yeah, but I think that's also something you can learn, or also depends, right? I mean, uh, it depends on where you are. Could you be somebody coaching you? Uh, depending when you, if you're just the right, greatest research but don't know how to sell your stuff then maybe you you need to go somewhere where, where there's somebody that can sell your stuff uh, but I think it, it varies there's a whole spectrum there right I mean if, if you look at the research communities there's all kind of people uh, and they're all successful for maybe for for, for different reasons and different uh, yeah mm-hmm. cool what are you you know in your work or also in your life what are you currently learning Oh, I mean, I guess the, the, the nice thing about research is there's always like new stuff to learn. But of course, now now being uh, at Definity, it's a, a startup. It's uh, uh, quite a new life. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, also IBM was an American company. It wasn't US uh, before, but but now it's this Silicon Valley group that that, that is quite different. It's uh, <laughs> also refreshing, and uh, uh, but of course, you can take also like. Uh, Take it with with a sense of humor to see like, like how things go there. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I think everybody, in some sense, regardless of what you do, you always if you're curious, you always learn new things. And uh, but but now I'm, I'm I'm very lucky, so it's uh, different environments and uh, things are changing all the time. It has its downside as well. You, I mean, uh, <laughs> when you wake up, things are not as they used to be, or things change. Um, no, but I mean, uh, it's really uh, exciting and there's so many things going on, so many opportunities to learn. So uh, the days are almost too short to deal with all of that. Mm-hmm. Unless you don't sleep. <laughs> yeah, you need to have that, otherwise <laughs> you don't <laughs> yeah, run very no, long. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think all of this is going? I mean, either at Definity or also in the blockchain research space. What's on the horizon there? Well, I don't have like a, a crystal ball, right? But uh, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, uh, distributed computing uh, as a, a solution to make things more secure, cheaper, that won't, won't go away. That's something we'll, we'll start and think. Uh, uh, of course, we, we are somewhere on, on that uh, typical hype curve. I think uh, I don't think that uh, blockchain or, or distributed computing in, in that sense is, is different from, from anything else. Um but it's it's really it's because uh, the world has realized this is a promising technology. There's a lot of benefits uh, on on doing that. So that that is there, and we'll see uh, applications in, in many areas. It's, it's going to be used. Uh, we'll have the inter- internet computer. Everybody's going to use, to use the internet computer because it's so nice uh, to use that, not to have to worry about uh, where computers are. Uh, of course, uh, when and what, what the timeline of that, we'll see. I mean, we, we don't know yet either. Right? I mean, uh, 
but things are looking very good, so and we're very positive. Mm-hmm. Jan, this was great. Thanks a lot for taking well, time. Well, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us today. More info on our guests and our sponsors is in the show notes of this episode and on the podcast website, theblockchainandus.com. To help people find this podcast, it's important that you download, subscribe, and give it a top rating and review on iTunes or on the podcast platform of your choice. I'm Manuel Staggers, and I thank you very much for listening.